All right, so this is the second of two lessons looking at problems involving related rates. And essentially, I'm just looking at more well, different questions and most likely a slightly more demanding set of questions. Um, but after this, we'll have five different examples done in the notes, and hopefully that helps looking at a variety of you know, the many examples they have in the assigned homework. That's it. For this one, we have uh, an example of something leaking or draining from, in this case, a cone, an inverted cone. That's what you see there. So a water tank has a shape of an inverted cone with a base radius of 2 meters and a height of 4 meters. So just to be clear about that, that means the distance from here to here is 2 meters. It's a weird looking M. 2 meters. And the distance from here to here is 4 meters. Uh, water is pumped into the rate. Sorry, I said this is leaking. This is actually water is going into this at a steady rate of 2 cubic meters per minute. Find the rate at which the water level is rising in the instant the water is 3 meters deep. All right, I'm just going to highlight that's what we're trying to figure out. The rate with which the water level is rising, the instant the water is 3 meters deep. Well, although I have a visual here, I'd like to make a diagram that I can draw in a little bit easier. So I'm just going to sketch out a cone here. All right, uh, and put some of the key information on here. So like I said, the shape of the cone, the distance from here to here. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that arrow, because I don't want that. That arrow om almost implies that that's, that distance is changing. That's not. So that's 2 meters. And the height, which is, again, of course, a constant, and forms a right angle, is 4 meters. That's what's told to us. Um, we know that. There's water in here that's rising. So I'm going to sketch out the idea of some water. Now this is, is changing. So the water level here is rising. So I'm going to draw an arrow pointing up. Okay, So that is changing. And so I'm going to call that h for the height. And that's what we're trying to find, not h, but the change in hei height. Find the rate with which the water level is rising. So we're trying to find dh dt, the change in height over time. When what? When the water is 3 meters deep. And that's really important because because of the shape of this, as if water is coming in at a steady rate, the water level will not rise at a steady rate. Uh, at the bottom, it'll, the raw water rise will rise really quickly because it's very skinny. At the higher it gets, the more slowly the water level will rise, which hopefully we can just visualize. So the fact, if I just ask how quickly is the water level rising, we don't know enough. You know, depends when. So when the height is three when the water is three meters deep, so in this case we'll say when h equals three. So that's what we're trying to figure out. Always important. What else do we know? Well we know the water is being pumped into the tank at a steady rate, a constant rate of two cubic meters per minute. A little hard to draw on my diagram. I guess I could draw water dropping into there. But I can express it as a derivative. The change in volume, that means. Um, so I'll say, in this case, I'll say dv over dt. That's what that's describing. The change in volume over time is 2 cubic meters per minute, so equals 2. And I'll put the units down. But the change in volume is constant. It's always 2. And we're trying to find the change in height over time. One more thing I'll label here uh, is, you know, I have the height labeled h, uh, and that's constantly changing. It's increasing. Well, also, it's probably not surprising. The radius is going to be important here. I'll, I'll be uncreative and call that r. And again, that's changing, right? Uh, the radius of the cone is constant, but not the radius of the water. All right, so. Now, the first step is done. I have it, everything visualized here. I know I have all the change and what I'm trying to find expressed as derivatives. Now I need to find a way to connect all this together. Really, I'm trying to connect um, how the height and you know how the height is changing based on the dimensions of this. So how do we do that? Well, one thing we need to realize uh, is that, for example, if I focus on this shape right here, okay, that sort of triangle I'm, that right triangle I'm filling in. That is always similar with this shape right here. So even though the water level is rising, and therefore it's constantly changing, if I focus on that sort of these triangles, these two triangles are similar to one another, which means the ratio of r to h is always going to be proportional to 2 to 4. 
or any combination, which is similar triangles as part of grade nine math, but <laughs> easy to forget. And so hence important to refresh your memory. So, so for this, I want to make a little note. Nope. If I'm when using similar triangles, there's a whole bunch of proportions I could come up with. Um, I'll say the ratio of radius to height, and that's referring to the water, must always be proportional to the radius and height of the cone, which in this case is 2 over 4. Now I can rearrange this in any way I want. Um, so I'm going to leave that there for now because it may not be clear what I want to do with this. But that kind of tells me how R and H are connected. But keep in mind, I can't differentiate this because I have to somehow connect the fact that the volume is changing. And this proportion here has nothing to do with volume. So now let's put that on hold and let's think about the volume of a cone. The volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared height. It's really the exact same as the volume of a cylinder with the same radius and height, but then divided by 3. And again, we know the derivative of v. We're trying to find the derivative of h. That r we see in the equation we don't really want in the end. So now I know if I look at this equation here, before I differentiate anything, I don't want that r right there. Uh, and I don't need to have it because I have the same radius is right there, which I can therefore isolate. If I isolate r in this similar triangles proportion here, I can substitute that into the volume equation, and then I don't have to deal with the radius anymore. So let me go back to this and isolate r. You know, I mean, and uh, if I isolate r, I get eventually r equals h over 2. You know, because I could also simplify this 2 over 4 down to 1 over 2. And so again, isolating r, I get h over 2, which means now going to my volume equation, I no longer have to be dealing with that variable of r. I have 1 third, or actually I'm going to write this as pi over 3. That's my constant, right? Pi and 1 third are constants, and so I might as well put them together. And constants, or in this case a constant coefficient, is always very pleasant when eventually differentiating. So instead of r squared, I have h over 2 squared times h. And again, while I am going to eventually differentiate with respect to time, I might as well clean this up a bit. The more sort of simplifying I do right now, the easier my life becomes later. And so if I simplify this a bit, I'll do this in a few steps. I get pi over 3 times h squared over 4 times h, which I can put all together as pi over 12 times h cubed. And that equals the volume. That's actually a pretty nice equation. The hardest part of this question is definitely done, because now I have an equation that relates height to volume for this scenario, nothing else. I haven't differentiated anything yet. Now I'm going to differentiate with respect to time. And so on the left-hand side, dv dt, we know that. That was told us in the question. That's 2. On the left-hand side, use the power rule and the chain rule. So I get 3 times pi over 12 h squared times the derivative of h with respect to time. And that's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out this. And we know this. And we know the instant we're looking at. And so at this point, it's a matter of, you know, I'm just going to isolate dh dt and substitute the values in. So if I isolate dh dt, so that's again what we're trying to find, I get, after I simplify things, I get 4 times dv dt over pi h squared. Keep in mind again that 4 right there came from 3 over 12 is 1 fourth, but when I isolate it, um, I multiply by 4. And again, dv dt, is, we know, is always a constant of 2 cubic meters per minute. And we want to find the change in height when the height, the instant the height is 3 meters. So I know all those values. And then I can find what I need. And so at this point, uh, we get 8 over 9 pi. Oh, sorry, this should be squared right here, 3 squared. 8 over 9 pi. And what are the units? Again, if you're not sure, fair enough. Look back here. That's the derivative we have just found. And so what's the units of height? The units in height in this case are meters. The units of time in this question were minutes. So 8 over, eight, not eight over 9 pi meters per minute. Notice for this question, the actual differentiating part was really quite quick. Um, 
most of our work was well before that. In fact, most of our work was not actually calculus at all. Most of our work was similar triangles and finding this relationship. Doesn't mean it's easy, but this is why, again, you know, while we have all these courses before you can really take calculus. There's a lot of things we need to kind of draw upon. Let's look at a different problem. So, a man walks along a straight path at a speed of four feet per second. So, I can see that I have a diagram already, so I'm gonna show that right away as an arrow this way. And I know that's growing, okay? So that's four feet per second. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll just label this right now as dx over dt equals four. All right, the change in x. Um, that's it, a searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path. We can see that in the diagram. Uh, and it's kept focused on the man. So that means as he's walking this way, this angle theta is moving this way as well, it's changing. Uh, at what rate is a searchlight rotating? when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight. So first, first things first, at what rate is the searchlight rotating? That means at what rate is theta changing? Which means I wanna find d theta dt. But when, uh, when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight. So what does that mean when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight. That means that the distance from here to here is 15, when x is 15. So that's what we're trying to find at that moment. All right, and since we already have a diagram kind of given to us, um, I'm ready to move on. So now I want to find a relationship between these, in this case, x and theta. Not surprisingly, we're going to use right angle trigonometry, and so I'll use the tangent function. And so I can say the tan of theta equals x over 20. And hopefully this question sounds, the setup of it sounds familiar. We did something very similar yesterday with a hot air balloon question, but there's gonna be one distinctly different part about this. Um, now that's it, I can just focus on this, but again, as with I did with the last lesson, since it's so easy for me to isolate one of the variables, I'm just gonna multiply both sides by 20. Say 20 tan theta equals x. That's it. Now I want to differentiate everything with respect to time. Oops. And so on the left hand side, uh, I have, actually I'll do the right hand side first. I have dx dt. Which again, we know that, right? dx dt is four. So I'll just highlight that in blue. Uh, on the right hand side, I have 20 times the derivative of tangent is secant squared theta times the derivative of the inside function, d theta dt. And that's what we're trying to find. All right, so I might as well solve for d theta dt. It's pretty pleasant and I get dx dt over 20 secant squared theta. So again, that's what we're trying to find. We know this, but here's where we run into problems. Because if we look back at the question, I want to find d theta dt when x equals 15. If I look at my equation here, it's in terms of theta, not in terms of x. So how do I figure this out? I don't know what theta is. And so you may be tempted to find theta. Okay, I'll make a little note here. So what is theta? Um, well, I mean, and there is a way to find theta. Uh, that said, you know, we know x is 15 at this point, and I could use, I could actually literally find theta using the inverse tan function, um, and then put that into the secant function and then square it, uh, and we could do that. Uh, it would require a calculator, it'll get messy. However, I don't actually need to do any of that. I don't actually need to know theta. I just need to know the cosine of theta, because remember, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Um, and so, for example, I'll just make a little note here and I'll show you how I can approach this. Okay, so I'll first I'll say we don't actually need to know theta. We only need to know the cosine of theta. Right, so 
what do I mean by that? Well, let's, let's first, I can, let me clean up this equation a bit. We, again, we know dx dt is four. We know he's walking at a rate of four feet per second, I think it was. So four over 20 secant squared theta, okay? Which reduces to one fifth secant squared theta, or if I write it as a reciprocal, cosine squared theta over five. Okay, all these expressions are equivalent. That's it, if I look here, perhaps this makes it more close why I said we only need to know cos theta. So how can I figure out cos theta? Well, let's put this on hold for a moment. And maybe I'll even say as well here that let's remember that this means cos theta all squared over five. Again, I don't actually have to figure out theta. I just need to know what's the cosine of theta. And so for this, let's go back to the, you know, some basic trigonometry. I have a right triangle where 20 is the distance from, and I'll, I'll label theta. Theta is right here. 20 is that constant distance. And this distance from here to here is changing, but we, we're looking at the instant when this is 15 when x is 15. And remember, this is the person walking, this same triangle we see up here, just drawn without the three-dimensional aspect. And so at that instant, uh, what's the cosine of theta? Well, to find the co cosine of theta is hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So I need to find the hypotenuse, which again, I can now use the Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse here is going to be the same as the square root of 15 squared plus 20 squared which is in the end just 25. It's a squared of 225. Sorry, not 225. I feel like that's, fifth, that's just 15 squared. 625, sorry. And the square root of that is 25. And so now that means, therefore, from theta, the cosine of theta is 20 over 25. or want to reduce it to 4 fifths. So the cosine of theta is 4 fifths. What's the angle at that moment? I don't know. I don't care. I could use the inverse cos function. In fact, I have a calculator in front of me. So in radians, the inverse, you know, the actual angle when cosine is 4 fifths is 0.6435 radians. But why not just deal with 4 fifths, which is exact? Because again, when I said 0.6435, that was rounded. So Again, uh, I don't actually need the angle, I just need the cosine of the angle. And so now, going back here, I can take 4 fifths and square that and divide by 5. Which leads us, to, in the end, when you simplify it, to 16 over 125. And what are the units? Well, look back. This is the derivative of d theta over dt. And so my units are in radians. And I'll say how I know it's not in degrees per, uh, I think it was seconds, it says up here. He's walking at a rate of four feet per second. So lastly, before I move on to the last question, how do I know that wasn't degrees per second? Well, I know as soon as I said the derivative of tangent was secant squared, I'm thinking in radians, right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared is correct if and only if we're thinking in radians, not if we're thinking in degrees. And so that's how I know my angles are in radians. If I was thinking in degrees, I, this part here would be incorrect. And the work would be a bit messier. Uh, my answer would be a bit different, and that would be in degrees. But why do that when we have a perfectly good answer in radians? And again, in degrees, it's always going to be more messy. All right, last one. A spotlight is on the ground facing a wall 20 feet away, as we can see here. A six foot tall man, so I'll label that in here. This person is six feet in height. is walking towards the wall. So I'm going to draw a line like this. He's walking towards the wall. Um, that distance is growing at a rate of 2.5 feet per second. When the person is 8 feet from the wall, how fast is the height of the shadow changing? So now I need to think about a shadow. So the reason there's a shadow is because the light beams of light are kind of going like this. And the shadow will be this distance from here to here. And as well, notice, uh, as a person walks towards the wall, um, the shadow is going to be shrinking. 
you know, when the person's standing right here, the shadow's going to be less. Plus, hopefully you can just visualize if you have a light behind you and you walk towards the wall, the shadow shrinks. Either way, it doesn't really matter too much just yet. Now, um, you know, I can, what's, what's, you know, I can call my X right here or I can call an X this little distance from there to there. I want to leave it as this and I'll say why. Because if I put the X right here, then I can use similar triangles quite nicely. Um, but before I get to that, let's label what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to find, well, actually, I know that dx dt, it says he's walking at a rate towards the wall at a rate of 2.5 feet per second. So if we're calling x this distance from here to here, and we always have a choice, then that x is getting larger. And so it's the derivative is 2.5, or 5 halves. That's what we know. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find dh or dy. Um, you know, I'll call it y, actually. So I'm trying to find dy over dt. But when, it says when he's 8 feet from the wall. So i got to be careful. Because if we say this, when x equals 8, that's wrong. Because again, I've chosen x to be the distance from the spotlight to the person walking. So when he's 8 feet from the wall, x is not 8, x is 12, because the, that total distance is 20. That's it. I could have set it up differently and called this x, which then it would have been when x is 8, and this derivative would have been shrinking. So we set x up to be going this way. This distance is getting smaller. And so the derivative for dx dt would be negative 2.5, and I, that's totally valid. I'm just going to set it up like this. So now, how do I connect x and y together? Again, I can use similar triangles, because this triangle right here is similar to this triangle right here. And it doesn't matter where the person is standing. Those two triangles will always be similar to one another. And so in this case, I can say the ratio of 6 over x must be equivalent to y over 20. And it doesn't matter what x is, that ratio will always be correct. If you visualize that person standing in a different spot, it'll always be correct. The ratio of 6 over x will be proportional to y over 20. So again, using similar triangles. All right, and I could differentiate this as is. That said, I might as well solve for one of these variables. And we're trying to find dy dt, so I might as well solve for y. So if I solve for y first, I get y equals 120 over x. And if I want to differentiate this, which I do, I might as well write it with negative exponents. 120 divided by x, same as 120 times x to the negative 1. This is what I want to differentiate. So on the left-hand side, I have dy dt. And that's, again, what I'm trying to figure out. So I'll highlight that in green right here. On the right-hand side, it's actually pretty pleasant. Uh, I use the chain, we'll use the chain rule and the product rule. So I have negative 120x to the negative 2 times the derivative of x with regards to time, which we know that's 5 and a half, 5 over 2, or 2 and a half. And we know x. X, it's the instant x is 12. So at this point, it's a matter of just you know, cleaning this up a bit. And when I say clean it up, I'm going to write it with a positive exponent. So I have negative 120 uh, over x squared times dx dt. And again, x is 12, dx dt is 5 over 2. And I'll write it as a fraction because I have a fraction here. So I have negative 120 over 12 squared times 5 over 2. And it simplifies to negative 25 over 12. What are the units? So again, it's dy dt, the units of y. Everything here is in feet, so it's in feet per. What were the units of time? Look in the question, it was seconds. So feet per second. And notice my derivative was negative, as I knew it was going to be. Because I can just tell by looking at the diagram that as the person walks towards the wall, their shadow will be getting smaller. Lots of ways of setting it up again. In this case, 
because I did a little bit of simplification at first, my actual derivative I'm dealing with is quite easy. This is a question I would expect students to find challenging, but it's not the differentiating that's challenging. And notice that's kind of a theme of a lot of these last few questions. The actual differentiating is not that complex. It's finding a way to set everything up. That is the challenging part, most likely. But that's where I'm